Welcome to our services this morning. So glad that you have chosen to connect with the Lord and connect with us and that hopefully you've invited others to connect with us this morning as we continue to fulfill the mission that God has given to us. God has called us together as a fellowship to strengthen the church, the believers, and to gather a harvest. And together, we will continue to make that happen. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for continuing to trust God and to partner with us as we continue to move forward. Man, what a great time of worship we just had. I hope you were able to connect. If not, you can go back later and, and, and uh, view the worship set and the worship service. Man, I just it want to make you shout hallelujah. My God reigns. I don't know who your God is, but my God reigns. And forever I will say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing. And then, you know, part of the song says, God, I look to you. Let's look to him today. He says, I look to you. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. And that's my prayer for us today, that as we continue in this series that I've entitled Why, that God would give us the wisdom to know just what to do in our personal lives, in our, for our families, in our houses, in our churches, in our, in our, in our uh, region, in our state, and in our nation. God, you know, give us wisdom to know just what to do. So God bless you. That's my prayer for you this morning as we start uh, this message. And we continue the series that I started last week that I entitled Why. Now we're going to go through this month and I'm going to bring you teachings. Why pray? Why worship? Why connect? Why serve and why give? Why be generous? And we're going to talk about that. But last week I said I started the series because I felt like the Lord said, tell them why you feel like you need to preach the series. Why? And so we talked about I took you to the story of Samson and we recognize that we have an enemy and he's trying to steal our vision. He's trying to pester us and press us until we give up the secret of our success, which is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our commitment to him, no matter what comes, that we're going to continue the mission and the vision that he's given us personally and together as a fellowship. But we have an enemy who's trying to pester us and press us and wear us out. And I said something last week that the Lord reminded me. He said, listen, remember. Remind them this is a spiritual battle. We may be seeing physical things. There may be things going on in the economy. There may be, there's things going on with this virus. Everything that's coming to pester and press you manifests itself physically, but there is a spiritual battle behind it and we cannot forget that. That's why we need to be aware that why pray, why worship, why connect, why serve, why be generous. It's because we are fighting a battle. We're in a spiritual battle and those things help break the back of the enemy while we're engaged in a spiritual battle. Let me show you something here in the book of Ephesians chapter six, starting in verse 10. It says a final word. This is Paul speaking to the church again. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power in his power. Let's be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And then he says, put on all the armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. We've got spiritual armor that God gives us. And he goes on to say, for we are not, verse 12 of chapter six, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. I wasn't just saying that last week. It's biblical. It's a truth. Paul warned the believers then and Paul and, and the Lord comes to warn us also. Listen, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. And then in verse 18, after he says, Be, understand this is a spiritual battle. Then he says in verse 18, pray. Come on, say it with me where you are. Pray. Why pray? Because we're in a spiritual battle and we put on the armor of God and we'll talk about that in another message. And then he says, now stand. And he says, Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. We should be praying. Why? Because we have a battle and it's spiritual in nature. And prayer is a spiritual weapon that God gives us and instructs us to use when we're in the middle of the enemy trying to pester us and press us and wear us out and lose hope and lose faith. God says pray. Why pray? So that we can be victorious over the enemy as he comes with his schemes and the devices to discourage you, to try to intercept you, to try and interrupt your life, your marriage, your family, our churches, this nation. God says, pray. And he says, and stay alert. 
Be persistent. Let the, be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. In other words, don't just pray once. Continually pray. So why? Why pray? Well, first of all, we pray because we're in a spiritual battle and we pray in order to stand and fight in God's power and in his might against principalities, according to the scripture, against powers, against rulers of the darkness in this age. So why pray? Because we're in a battle. Now, there's three more reasons that I want to share with you this morning or today, whenever you listen to this message or during the week of why pray. We have an enemy and he's out to destroy us, to discourage us, to take our, to, to gouge our eyes out as it were in the story of Samson so that we lose the ability to see past the pain, past the trouble. He wants to steal our vision for the future. He wants to steal our hope. He wants to get us stuck in the problem and the trouble and the things that are just too hard, too difficult. So we need to pray so that we can see past where we are today. And then in James, catch this with me. James chapter five. Everybody with me? Everybody understand we're in a spiritual battle. You understand that we have a good God who comes and he warns us. And he says, hey, Richard, wake up. By the way, I know you're feeling stressed. Come on, somebody feel me this morning. I know you're feeling pressured. I know you're feeling challenged. I know there's a lot of questions and a lot of decisions. But hey, listen to me. This is not a flesh and blood battle. It is a spiritual battle that has set itself against you, against the people of GSCC, against every believer and everyone that the Lord is trying to gather in this harvest. He says, so pray. But then look at what he says in James 5. Look at the instruction to the church church about why pray. Y'all with me? Look, three more reasons that we're going to look at here. We're going to talk about a why pray. Here we go. Y'all with me? James chapter five, verse 13. Everybody there? <laughs> Did I say good morning to you all this morning? That I'm just so fired, out about, fired up about what the Lord is saying to us. He's warning us. He's preparing us, which means he also has a victory prepared for us. And we will listen to what the Spirit of the Lord says. If I didn't welcome you, if I didn't say good morning, good morning, welcome. Please hear what I feel the Lord is saying to us in this season where he's going to explain to us through his word why. Why we need to do these things to get to the other side of where we are today. James chapter 5. Verse 13, it says, are any, of you, are any of you suffering hardships? Wow. Can I just pot, are any of you suffering hardships? Do you know somebody that's suffering hardships? He says, you should pray. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't go in a panic. And don't, don't be looking all over the internet trying to figure out. He says, pray. He says, are you any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. We're talking about why pray and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Verse 16 says, confess your sins to each other and pray. I mean, it just, it, this is biblical. This is not just a good idea. It's God guide. It's a lamp and it's a light for our path as we navigate this difficult season that we're in. He says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power, great power. Our prayers have great power and produces wonderful results. I'm in the New Living Translation, not because I'm righteous, but because I put my faith in the righteous one and he gives me his righteousness. I am declared righteous by the work of the cross, the burial of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the resurrection. And now because I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he declares declares me righteous. And when I pray and when you pray as a son, a daughter, a servant of the most high God, he says, what you pray has great power and produces wonderful results. It's not a flesh and blood battle. It's a spiritual battle. And God says, pray. Then he goes on to say, and he says, by the way, you remember Elijah? Look at verse 17. He says, Elijah was human, just like we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly, when he prayed earnestly, it says that no rain would fall. None fell for three and a half years. What? He said, Lord, stop the rain for three and a half years. It didn't rain. Cállate la boca. What? Prayer. 
We, do, we, we, we talk about prayer, but do we really believe in prayer? And are we praying earnestly? And then listen, then he prayed again, verse 18. And he said, uh, let me read it. He says, then when he prayed again, the, he, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. Wow. So we pray. We pray in order to stand and fight in God's power and in his might against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this age. But we also pray here. Three more reasons why we pray. We pray because people are suffering hardships. And when people are suffering hardships, you know them. I know them. Maybe some of you are suffering hardships. He says, don't panic. Don't worry. Don't get in depression. Don't get in despair. He says, pray. They're suffering. He says, and when you see someone that's suffering hardships, Pray for them. Don't try and figure out why it's happening to them. Don't try and figure out how come this is happening. He says, pray. We pray because people are suffering hardships. We should pray in the middle of this battle that we're in. Another thing is that we pray because people are sick. When people are sick, the Bible says pray. And when we pray, it says that God will heal them. John 16, 23, look at this. It says, and in that day, you will ask me nothing. He says, most assuredly, catch this, I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do. God, Jesus is saying, listen, you're going to need to pray. There's some things that are going to come. And when that happens, he says, ask the Father in my name. This is Jesus speaking. And he will do, he will work on your behalf. Acts 14, 12 says, nor is there any salvation, any salvation, spiritually, healthy, and all our help. He says, the salvation that we need, not just for eternal life, but to save us from everything that comes against us. In this hour, he says, there is no salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Saved, healed, set free, discipled, equipped, empowered, and then serving God and serving one another. Listen, when we pray in faith, we, people will be sick. Listen, our, our, our directive from the Lord is to pray. He's the one that heals. He raises them up. And we pray in Jesus' name because he is the healer. Men aren't healers. Men are given the, the, uh, the privilege the responsibility and the ability to pray in the name of Jesus. And when we pray in the name of Jesus for those that are suffering hardship, for those that are struggling, for those that are sick, it says God will move on our behalf because we ask the Father in Jesus' name to do those things that we cannot do. Come on, listen. He asks us to pray and let him be the healer and the provider and the protector and everything else that we need in this season of our life. So we pray because people are suffering hardships. We pray because people are sick. Thirdly, we pray to help one another. The scripture says, pray for one another. It says in, in verse 15, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power. Please hear me. Your prayer has great power. My prayer has great power and it produces wonderful results. The question is, well, when is it going to happen? That's up to God. Remember, we pray, he does. <laughs> say that. Can you say that to yourself? Say that. To, we pray, he does. But we pray and the reason why our prayer is powerful and the reason why it produces and does good things is because we're praying to the Father in Jesus' name, just like the Bible tells us to. And when we follow his instructions, that's where the success in life is. When we do as he says, when we pray as he prays, when we do those things and we have the heart of the Father to do those things and when we listen and do what Jesus says, he said, you're going to stand in the middle of every storm that comes your way. I hope you're praying. I hope you're getting this. We pray. We pray because we're in a spiritual battle. We pray because people are suffering hardships. We pray because people are sick and they need, need Jesus to come and heal them and help them and restore them. We pray because it's one of the ways that we help one another. And we are told to pray to whom? That's right, to the Father. And in whose name? In Jesus' name. Listen to what Matthew chapter 6 Verse five says, let me show you this in the word, just in case you were wondering. 
Matthew chapter six, start, I'm going to jump to verse six. It says, but when you pray, he's assuming that you're going to pray, that I'm going to pray. He says, but when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to who? What does the Bible say there? Or your phone or wherever you're reading the word of God? It says, pray to your father who is in the secret place. Here it is again. Pray to your father and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, he's not saying if you pray, he says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. There's no formulas. If you pray this prayer, then you'll get this result. It's an intimate, personal communication conversation that I have with God. When I pray for people that are experiencing hardships, when I pray for people that are sick, there's no formula. There's no method. I, listen, there's nothing wrong if you have a formula, but I'm saying the secret is not in the formula. The secret is in the one who heals. The secret is in the one who saves the power and the authority is in the one who's been given the name above all names. He says, so oh, don't use rain, vain repetitions. It's not a religious exercise. He says, don't do this as a heathen do for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Some people say, I don't know how to pray. And I say, can you talk? Yes, well, just have a conversation with God. He wants to hear what's on your heart. Therefore, he says, do not be like them. For here we go, your father, God the father, the one true God says, he says, he knows the things that you have need of before you even ask him. So in this manner, therefore pray. This is how I want you to pray. And he says, start by praying our father. In other words, we're directing our prayers to the father in Jesus' name. Y'all get that? This is not an idea. This is not a, this is, this is biblical. This is scripture. Go back and read it for yourself. Like I always say, please read the scriptures, follow the stories, follow the messages that I'm giving you and go look for yourself and say, God, is this you? And what are you saying to me about this? Why pray in this season of my life? And who do I pray to? And in whose name do I approach you? So we looked at why pray. We, who we pray to. And now the question, another question is, well, who can pray? Some people say, well, I, I'm not good enough to pray. I just, I, I'm going to call you so that you can pray because I think God loves you more than he loves me. Or I think you're a better person or have lived a better life. Or, or I think you can pray because you haven't made the big mistakes that I've made. But no, 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 that's not what the Bible says. Nowhere in the Bible will you hear that. Now it says that if we have unforgiveness in our heart or we have enmity against another brother and we go pray, he says, go take care of that and then come pray. But you can pray, but when we pray in the right heart to the right Father, to the only true God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, He says that everyone can pray. He said all believers, not just a select few. In Ephesians, Paul wrote, we wrestle. He didn't say I wrestle. Or you guys said, we, the church, the believers, we all wrestle. Every one of us needs to put on the armor of God and everyone can pray. Tell yourself, I can pray. It's not about whether you're perfect. It's not about whether you've got everything done right this week. It's about the one that was perfect and sinless and came as a man and died and was crucified and was buried and he rose on the third day. It's when I put my faith in him, he declares me righteous. I receive justification and because I believe in him, I can come to the Father boldly, the throne room of grace and have conversations with him. Everyone needs to pray in this season. Why? Because we have an enemy. We have an enemy who's trying to destroy us and steal our vision and our hope for the future. James said in verse in chapter five or 17 that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He wasn't superman. He wasn't superhuman. He didn't live a perfect life or a sinless life. There was only one who lived a perfect life. There was only one who lived a sinless life. And that's who I'm putting my hope and my confidence in. Elijah was just a man, just like me, just like you. And he was a man. He didn't have extraordinary gifts or abilities. I don't know if he had charisma or not. It doesn't say all that. All I know is that God said, here, Elijah, this is what I have for you to do. And when he did that and he trusted in God and he prayed, things happened. Happen. He was a man in nature, just like you, just like me. So each and every single one of us can pray and we should pray. Elijah prayed. In the scriptures, the believers prayed. We also can pray and we should pray. Why? Because we're in a spiritual battle. Please hear me, GSEC family and friends. We're in a spiritual battle. There's all kinds of stuff going on. We're feeling the physical uh, effects of it. I, I know people that I know personally that are struggling with the virus. I, 
I know a few people that have actually passed because of the virus. I had a man that, that, that I met early uh, in my time here at the church. He's, in, he, he's, he's a young man. I say young, he's in his 50s. And he had a struggle with, with the COVID and, and he's no longer with us. Listen, I understand all the things that are going on. But listen, we are not a people to be hunkered down in fear. We're to be a people of prayer. We're praying because people are struggling. We pray because we're in a spiritual battle, because we're struggling. We pray because some of us may be sick. We pray because some of us and those of you out there, we need help. And it's not a physical hell. Now, we're going to do what we can in our community. We continue to do that. We're working with the schools. We're still helping families that are struggling. Well, there's people that are losing loved ones right now. And we're trying to help them as much as we can, as best as we can. We got a call from one of our families in Matamoros. Uh, and, and we're trying to help them with some water uh, to go to the hospitals because they had run out. Listen, we're going to do our part. We're going to continue to help our community. But the greatest help that we can, yeah, we can give to our, to our spouses, to our children, for our church, for our community, is that we stand, we stand in the power and the authority of God and we begin to pray, we begin to do spiritual warfare. We're praying for the lives of our families and, and the lives of our churches and the lives of our nation. We're praying for the future of our families. We're praying for the next generation that's coming behind us. We're praying against fear. We're praying against chaos. We're praying against anarchy. We're praying against division. This is a spiritual battle and we must us pray. Just turn to somebody and say, well, I'm going to pray. I, I may not be all that eloquent in what I'm saying, but I, I, I have a conversation that I can have with God. I'm going to pray for you because I care about you. I, I don't have fancy words to say. I don't know the formula. You don't need one. Just share what's in your heart. But church and friends, family and friends of GSCC, we must pray. I want you to catch this as I close up this message on why pray. Remember Samson last week? We understand the enemy pestered and pressed him until he gave up the secret of his strength. And by the way, the secret of my strength is my faith, my hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is able to present me faultless in the presence of the Father, that because of what he did, I'm declared righteous and I'm justified. And that one day he says, I'm able to present you to the father faultless in the presence of the father. My hope is not in, in am I a good enough person? My hope is not as have I done enough good things to make up for all the bad things I did? My hope is not in praying a formula. My hope is not putting my faith and trust on anything or anyone except the work of the cross and the power of the resurrection. And that's my strength. How do I get strength when I'm weak? I turn to Jesus. How do I find hope in the midst of despair? I turn to Jesus. How do I find freedom in the midst of things that are trying to bind me up? I turn to Jesus. He is the secret of my strength, the work of the cross and the power of the resurrection. But you know, Samson, he gave up the secret of his strength. The enemy came, bound him up, afflicted him, took out his eyes, which, which symbolized, we said, his ability to see past his situation. And he was a grinder. He was just making it. He was just trying to get by one more minute, one more hour, one more day. But God said he has come to give us life. Jesus said, I've come to give you abundant life. He didn't want us to come to just grind it out. Now we're going to have difficulties. We're going to have problems, but we, we know that everything works for good for those who love God. And so we're not just going to grind it out. I'm not just waiting for something to happen. I'm putting my faith in him and say, God, what do you want me to do in the midst of what's going on? So you remember the story, right? I'm sorry. I'm preaching it to you again. He lost his vision. He was grinding, but let me finish the story for you today. Y'all with me? Look at, look at Judges chapter 16, verse 28. This is after all that happened. And then the enemies, they were going to make fun of him. See, when I would lie to the Samson, hey, why don't you bring him out here so he can entertain us? We're going to laugh at the one that trusted in God. We're going to ask, the, we're going to laugh at the one that had this great strength, but now he lost his strength. We're going to laugh at that one who surrendered and gave up the secret of his strength. We're going to mock him. We're going to make fun of him. And he was grinding in the prison. But look at what happens. <laughs> I'm telling you, God always, 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 always has a final word about everything in my life. Judges 16, 28, catch this. He says, then Samson, while he was grinding it out and they called for him to come and put on a show so they could laugh at him. It says, then Samson called to the Lord saying, oh, Lord, God, remember me. I 
What does your Bible said? It says, I pray. Man, don't miss that. Even after Samson had made a mistake and even after Samson had lost hope, even after Samson had lost his ability to see past where he was, he remembered that there was a God who would hear and enter his prayers. Listen, he said, oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. And then he says, strengthen me, I pray. He's praying. What do we do in the midst of the spiritual battle? Why are we praying? Because we're in a spiritual battle, because people are afflicted and people are having, experiencing difficulty because people are sick and because people need help and we need help. And so just like Samson, if we haven't been able to see past where we are, we're gonna pray. It says, Samson prayed. And this is what he prayed, strengthen me just one more more time, God. Man, may that be the prayer of our hearts. God, strengthen me. I'm going to pray and give me strength one more time that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for taking my two eyes out. After his failure, after he lost his vision, maybe you're sitting there and you feel like you failed and it's too late for you and God helped you, but you went back and you got in the middle of those things that were enticing you and you've given up the secret of your strength. Maybe you're not trusting God anymore. Maybe you're not reading the word like you used to. I don't know where you're at in your spiritual journey, but the enemy has come to pester you and press you and now you think there's no hope. But my friend, let me tell you today, if you will but pray, Pray, if you will, but pray like Samson did. He said, God, one more time. He prayed this, remember me, strengthen me and use me. Oh, that that be our prayer in this season of difficulty and challenges and sickness and lack. Would we pray? Would you join us in prayer and say, God, strengthen me, strengthen you, strengthen us, strengthen my children, strengthen my family, strengthen the church, strengthen this city and strengthen this nation. One more time, God, I know you've strengthened me before. I know you've helped me before. I know you've taken me out of deep places before, but God, I pray one more time. Come on, church. Come on, family and friends. One more time. God, remember me. We belong to you. We are your sons and your daughters. We are trusted in you, oh God. And in the midst of our weakness, give us strength one more time. Come on, church. One more time. Let's go forward. Let's trust God. Let's stand up. Let's pray. Let's engage in this spiritual battle. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for our families. And most importantly, let's call out to God and say, God, come on right there where you are. Right there where you are. Because you say, God, remember me. Remember me. Remember me, Lord. I know you do. You've inscribed my name in the palm of your hand. Your word says that. Remember me. Now strengthen me. Come on. Be strengthened today in the power of the Lord. Strengthen me and use me one more time, Lord. Use me. Use me to help my family. Use me to help my children. Use me to help my church. Use me to help my workplace. Use me. I know I failed you, God. I know, but God, use me one more time. I didn't realize, oh God, that the enemy had wore me out. I didn't realize, oh God, that I had lost my ability to see past where I've been. Oh God, I couldn't see past the trouble. I couldn't see past the financial lack. I couldn't see past my pain. I couldn't see past my grief. I couldn't see past my losses. I couldn't see, I couldn't see, I couldn't see. But God, I pray. Why pray? Because I've been in a spiritual battle because people are experiencing hardships. Maybe you're experiencing hardships. Maybe you're sick and you need healing. Or you, you know someone, because people are sick and they need the healer to heal them. And we pray because we're gonna help one another through this. Remember me, strengthen me, and use me. I hope that's your prayer today. Why pray? Because there's a God that hears, and there's a God that answers, and there's a God that's inviting us in this season of spiritual warfare to pray and watch what he can do through your prayer. God bless you. I'm praying for you in Jesus name. I pray that you would be encouraged and strengthened today and that within you rise up one more time the desire to just one more time, Lord. One more time, Lord. Remember me, strengthen me one more time. Use me one more time to make a difference to serve you and to honor you with my life in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Listen, we love you. We're praying for you. Don't forget to connect with us during the week for our word of the day, English and Spanish. Don't forget to be praying this week as we move forward. And don't miss, don't miss next week's service as we talk about why worship.
We love you. We're praying for you. Remember, we are blessed for one reason. What is that? That's right, to be a blessing. God's going to remember you. God's going to strengthen you. And God's going to use you. We're so glad that you joined us for this great teaching today. It's our hope that the Lord would use this message to encourage you and to equip you to move forward into everything that he has prepared for you. If you have a prayer request, we would love the opportunity to pray for you. So stop by gsccconnect.com and click on the link labeled contact us to let us know how we can be in prayer for you. While you're there, be sure to check out our about page to learn more about the mission and vision of GSCC. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram to stay connected with everything going on at GSCC. Be blessed and have a great week and we'll see you next time.